Hi, I'm Shin Young. I'm the computer lab page at the Juliet Hampton Morgan Memorial Library. And today, we will be talking about how to use PowerPoint. So first, you just open up uh, PowerPoint. We'll be using the 2016 version. Now, when you first open it up, it'll show you a sample of like featured layouts, which basically just means it'll be like the theme or aesthetic for which your slides will look like. You know, you could look for specific kinds or designs, but we're just going to uh, choose the ones that they show us on the front page. I will be choosing gallery. Now, when using uh, different kinds of layouts, you're going to want to choose, well, not layouts, but the themes. When you're choosing different kinds of themes, you're going to want to choose the one that's appropriate for your project. So if it's for school, you don't want something that's too um, busy. You want something that's more simple so that your pictures or information stand out more. So that would be like your main focus rather than the design of the actual um, slides. So the first thing that they're going to show you is like this default slide, which will be your title slide. And here you just put the title. I'm going to put in this because I'm going to be doing mine on the creative technologies that we have at the Morgan uh, Library. And then the one underneath is your subtitle, but typically people put their name here. And after doing that, you do a new slide. So if you just click new slide, it'll go on to um, the next designed layout default slide, which is like a title and a description. But if you want a different type of layout, you just look at here, new slide, and it'll give you a bunch of like uh, samples. So the title slide is the first one that we did, and then the one we're doing right now is the second one, which is title and content. So there's different ones like section header to content, if you want to do like a side-by-side -side comparison, which is the next one. But the one before, I guess it's just more like if it's the same content, but if you're comparing the two, you use this one. And there's title only, there's blank. Uh, if you do a blank slide, it'll just be this blank slide, but you can insert your own text box by going to insert tab at the top, and there'll be a thing called text box. So this way, wherever you click, hold down and drag, that will be the size of your text box and you can move it around where you want it. So let's say you want the text here. You can adjust the side by holding down on the corners and dragging it. And that way if you want it to be like right here and then you want your title to be here and then your pictures over here, you could do like that. But if you just want it to use the defaults, that's fine as well. Let's go and click on this. Now at the Morgan Library, we have a Z space, which is a educational VR system. And the another two, let's just two, let's do three. Change the layout of this one to title and content. Layout to title and content. Um, what's another one? We have a recording studio. And we have a 3D printer. Let's see. So typically with this, when you type a bunch of stuff, it will be like bulleted. So when you so the default is bulleted, but if you don't want the bullets, you just go back and you backspace all the way back and it'll just reset it to the default of typing rather than it being in bulleted form. If you look at the home bar, you'll see a bunch of things similar to Microsoft Word where it's like the alignment of this text, bulleting, numbering, things like that. So that's just something for you to um, mess around with. You can also mess up the font. Like these are just default fonts that they use for this design. But you can, you know, adjust it to whatever you'd like or whatever your teacher tells you um, to use, like Times New Roman or Arial. So another thing you could do is put pictures inside. So if you're asking for a table or a chart, 
Insert a smart art graphic, video, picture, online picture. So online pictures is basically kind of like their own database. When you click on it, it'll bring up a search bar. Typically, I think it's Bing. Let me bring it up. Yeah, so there'll be a Bing image search. And you type in what you're looking for and you click on it. Or if you want to use your own pictures, that's when you click on pictures and you browse to use your computer with pictures that you've downloaded from um, either the internet or something you put on a flash drive. Now you can copy and paste pictures also and then adjust the pictures accordingly. So let's see. So if I were to go to google.com, look up a picture of an apple, copy the picture, and I paste it. Now you have the picture instead of just like downloading and uploading it, you can do the either or. Now this copying and pasting the picture seems has removed the content box, but you can also just always go to insert at the top and put in your text box. So after you put in like all your information, now you don't have to put it all like exactly, like if I were to do a serious PowerPoint, I wouldn't just do like these three slides. I'd probably divide it up by what's um, pertaining to those slides to different parts. Uh, for ZSpace, you'd probably just put down like the different types of educational VR uh, programs are in it. So there's like medical stuff, there's uh, Chemi like chemistry stuff, there's like all those kind of topics and so I would just separate it into uh, two or three more slides underneath ZSpace. Or if you are if you don't want your PowerPoint to be that long, then you do like a summary sort of slide and then the next slide you just describe all the, into details of different parts. Uh, recording Studio, we have like different programs and software, um, like GarageBand, things like that. And you would just talk about like each software that's pertaining to the recording studio, and possibly like the technology that we like the type of um, tech that we use. So, like what kind of microphone do we use? What kind of headphones do we use? You know, what kind of soundproof soundproofing do we do in the recording studio room? And for the 3D printer, I would just talk about like the specific uh, printer that we have, and then the next slide would be just like examples of. The next slide could be like pictures and examples of um, how people have used the 3D printer. So when you're finished with your whole PowerPoint, you can go back and start doing transitions or animations. So if we just do a slideshow now from the beginning, all it would do is just do like this immediate transition to the next and end it like that. But if you want to do uh, specific designs. If you click on a design, it'll show how it'll look like if you use that transition. So the transitions will be the animation that's between the slides, and then animations will be uh, the special effects on the slide itself rather than in between. So first let's do transitions. You can do a fade, so we'll just put a fade there, and then Onto the next slide, maybe you want to do like a wipe. And the next one, we can do random bars. And the last one, we can do like uh, a dissolve. And if you just look through, you'll see that there's a lot of different transitions that you can choose from. You can just click on it to see which one you like. And you can choose how long you want the uh, transition to be. So right now, these transitions are like one second each long. This one comes after 70 seconds because it's like the first slide. So that's why it's like that. On the last slide, it would be the last thing you see. So maybe you want to like fade to black. Anything like that. 
and you can put a delay on it so you can say like instead of like clicking um, to move on to the next slide you can choose a timer to see when it will start on to the next slide when it will start the transition to the next slide so if you look at animations you can click on certain parts of your um, slides and you can choose which animations you want they can grow and turn, random bars fly in and you can also just look through like they have a lot of different animations that you can just click see which ones you like now you can add more than one animation onto the same text so let's say you add a bounce and then you want to add another animation so let's see Ooh. so these are different uh, theme colors where you don't have to choose that one you can just do default if you ever run into something that you don't like and you want to undo it, you can also control Z until you get to the point that you'd like And you choose on a different text to add a different animation. You do that, and then you can choose like the type, like how long you want that to go on, uh, when you want it to start. So let's say right now this is one and two, so that's the order that the animations will do. So let's preview it. Create a slideshow from the beginning. This will come in first, and then that. So you can mess around with the uh, orderings of the animations by clicking on this and saying which one you want to move earlier or move later. Uh, you can choose the delay and the uh, timing, the, like the duration of it. Delay pictures, I can ask this to do that. So once you're done with like all your animations, you know, you can just save. Now, you can save as, and then you just put it in wherever you want to on your computer, somewhere you would remember it. Um, but Microsoft Technologies typically will have an autosave function, but it's a good practice to just constantly save, because you never know where your computer will like shut down, power out, like there's going to be like a power outage or something. You, you never know something might like, like something like that might happen. So you always want to make sure to like save constantly. <laughs> that way uh, you don't have any concerns about losing all your data that you just worked on. Let's see. Things. Now, if you don't like the design, like as you go on and you, you feel like your design is not how you like it, you can always just click on design and just kind of scroll through which ones you like. Let's change it to this one, you can change it to this one. Um, change it to this one. And then there's uh, on the sign, there's variants. So that just means like different types of the certain theme that you've chosen. Go, you can just always just preview the slide instead of having to go to slideshow and watching it from the beginning or watching it from that current slide. Now if you are turning in a recording of your slideshow, you can always just record it, turn it in like that. Or if your teacher is just asking you to turn the actual file, then you just attach the PowerPoint. Okay. And review is just like you could do like spell checks, you can like translate certain different languages, change your language that you want to type in. You can also add comments, which is just when you add a comment, it'll show up on the side. When you're like going through each side, there'll be comments on the side. And you can also put um, 
notes. So at the bottom there's comments and there's notes. So your notes is so when you, let's say I put a note here, it's like when you're doing a presentation and you want to have like a flashcard or something. So if you're allowed to be at the computer that you're um, presenting, when you're in your classroom and you're presenting something and you're allowed to be on your computer, having notes is useful. So let's say you have like, typically you don't want your slide to be too busy, right? So you'll have like simple information like, oh, you can do this, you can do this, you can do that. Just a bunch of like simple bulleted information. And in your notes is your more detailed, long information that you've uh, done your research on. So that way when you're doing your presentation, it won't go so quickly, especially if you need it to be longer in terms, in terms of like timing for presentation. So if I put, let's say, let's say I put like all the information that I, I'm just going to put in random letters and stuff. Just Let's say this is like all the information that you have that I found on your topic, on like this particular slide. So that way, even though this looks, you know, simple, direct, and easy to like follow, when you do your actual presentation, let's see, slideshow, I guess some people have the in their safe settings to always show the presenter's notes. But if you do show presenter view, this will look like on your screen. But when uh, connecting to like your other screens, basically this is what they'll see, the main screen. And then you'll see whatever is on the side. So whenever your teachers have like, they're at their computer at, your de at their desk, and they have like another screen over on the center of the classroom on the wall and you just see the PowerPoint slide but what they're able to do is if they have the presenter which you can do this yourself too if you have the presenter view on this is what they'll be seeing their audience and then what you'll be seeing is everything else so when you finally get to the next slide and they'll show like the um, preview of the next thing that will happen for you um, and then if you see here, the notes are right here on the side. So when you're presenting, they'll see all these bullet points and like the short, concise, simple information. And you'll have all this detailed information that you're able to present. So if you feel like you're not at, as good as remembering all that information that you've researched, you can also just put it in your notes. That's why when you present stuff, you won't be able to forget anything. You can always just you know, keep eye contact with your audience, with your teacher, and do your presentation while looking at the notes from time to time to remember what you've researched on these bullet points. Now you can put in video, you can put in audio, so if you downloaded a video or you want to look up a video online, like a link it to this, you can always do that. Same thing with audio. You can find audio that's on your computer or you can record it and put it on there. So if you want certain sounds in your transition or you want certain music running in the background of your slides, you can also do that. Now when you're when you're doing stuff from online, so if you're like inserting a video from YouTube or inserting a song that's on your computer or a video that's on your computer, Remember to always download those videos and those uh, and those uh, music files, those audio files, and those video files. Make sure to download it onto the flash drive that you're saving your PowerPoint on, because when you're doing a presentation and you don't have see, like it's not like the actual video or the music is on the PowerPoint. 
it's more like a shortcut, a link to something that's already on your computer that you were working on, the PowerPoint. So when you bring it to school and you go on your teacher's computer to um, present it, that, co that computer won't have the video or music file to connect to um, with where all those links that you've inserted into your PowerPoint. So you need to have it downloaded on your flash drive. That way when you get to that slide with that video or with that audio, it will actually play because it's on the computer via flash drive. So just always like remember to test it. So you, if you ever have, if your teacher will probably give you this like PowerPoint presentation assignment ahead of time. So whenever you're finished and you want to try it somewhere else, remember try to like do practice pre presentations, whether to a friend, like on another computer. So that way you can check like, oh, what files am I missing? What doesn't seem right when I play the um, presentation? And that's where you can also practice just your presentation skills in itself, so you don't feel as shy or you don't like mess up lines or anything like that. So you can just save it, just constantly save it, because you never want to lose all that data you worked on. Uh, I think that's all the basics, really. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that uh, about PowerPoint that I feel like is important to know, at least basic, like the basics about PowerPoint that you should know. But I think that should be all about it. But if you want to share it, you can email it. You can present it online. You can share it with people. Since Microsoft has its like Microsoft Office. You can share with people. You can save it to the cloud, the OneDrive location, if you have a Microsoft account. You can always just look it up where it is on your computer and attach it to an email, or if you have like a storage account, like Dropbox, you can always use anything like that. Let's see what else. I believe. Talked about the notes, talked about comments. Comments are useful for when you're doing like group projects and you want to, like each person in your group is doing their part of the PowerPoint. And then that way when you share it with everyone, it's like, oh, this is what I've done so far. They can put comments like, oh, I like this, but I'm wondering if we should change this or not. That's when you like keep on like sharing it around and around. They'll know what to change and stuff without having to meet up with each other every time. So that way you can just leave comments attach it and send it back to them or if you have like a group on Google you can always just like constantly update that same file with comments so yeah there's like there's all the there's a lot of things on PowerPoint a lot of different things you can mess around with which is what I always like su I would suggest is on your free time maybe just make a PowerPoint on your own just like not for school just your own personal like creative outlet. But you can always just go around and mess with these tools and just see what they do. You know, that's how I learned these tools mostly. I mean, school helped. But a lot of times it's just I messed around with a lot of the different tools that are on PowerPoint to figure out like what what anything does really. Like I know for example, a friend of mine, you, you don't have to use it for academic purposes, you can use it for personal purposes. Um, like a friend of mine, she wanted this the newest iPhone and stuff, but she wanted to convince her parents that she that it was necessary for her to have a phone because she couldn't afford it herself. So she did this whole PowerPoint about um, like each slide was just like, why I need this new phone? You know, why I deserve to have this one? Like I have good grades, I've been doing a part time job, and why I'm making this PowerPoint is because I'm asking if I can ask for a family loan from my parents kind of thing for this newest phone while they still continuously work at this part-time job continuously get good grades to make up for the phone 
but that they need the phone now, and so that's why they're asking. That's why she's asking for that loan. So that's what she did for her PowerPoint, and uh, she did get the phone, which was uh, you know, the, sounds like crazy, but it was effective. They really appreciated the PowerPoint. They found it very. Um, I mean, they, her parents. She said that her parents found it funny, but you know, it did work. So. Yeah, mess around with PowerPoint, look at the different tools it has on like the top bar to figure out like, so that way you'll be experienced and it be efficient in PowerPoint so that whenever you do academic PowerPoints, you already know all the ins and outs of Microsoft PowerPoint. All right, uh, so good luck with all your future PowerPoints. I hope all I've covered all the basics for you to be able to do the basic like skeleton outline of a PowerPoint and I hope you get creative with it.